I think it will also be interesting to see what happens with peak seizing. I mean, it's right around the corner. It's coming. And with these still challenges with capacity, I think it's really uh, even difficult to make a prediction, like you said, because traditionally, right, the, the GRIs are implemented and rights do increase. So it will be super interesting if they stick or if they do fall like traditionally. Yeah, I think I think I uh, loaded the Trans-Pacific Corridor. Let me see. That was uh, transatlantic. Great. I think this one is incredibly interesting to look at. This is uh, Trans-Pacific, so China, and this is representative of, of course, for Far East uh, main ports as well. So if you look at this going into U.S. West Coast, you will have sort of a lot of the same pattern into to East Coast as well. But if you look at the shorter market here, soaring. This is this is such an, a substantial mm -hmm. uptake from the bottom here. You can see we even had like arguably some some minor uh, IMO 2020 sort of increases going into 2020 here, which we already then debated as like they're nothing like in line with the normal market. But then what's happened here lately now, just for the last couple of months, last few months, rates have moved from like 1500 all the way up to two and a half thousand. Right? <clears throat> so that's a mm. massive uptake. And you can see the... The long-term market here average is still sort of holding up. It's, it's still fairly flat and low, but the new contracts that are now, now getting signed, they will be negotiated from, from the back of this short-term market. So if you had an RFQ running now for the last, let's say, couple of months, you, so, you sort of started your negotiations here, you can see in May, June, at a very different short-term market. Now, if you run your RFQ now, you're, 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 the rate they compare it to is, is this high, very high short-term market. And this is why it's, it's potentially very attractive to sort of stall and see, will more capacity come to the market? And will these short-term markets now come mm -hmm. down, down? Have we sort of reached the plateau here so that you, know, you could find more favorable long-term markets? Because the way it looks now and the way uh, our shippers are communicating with us, they're facing rate increases on this one, which makes complete sense, right? And, and some of them report that they see in their RFQs a $500 increase on a long-term uh, uh, rate. And, and that, that makes kind of safe sense if you see where their short-term market is but right. it might be very temporary. And that's why time to market is so essential that this could be the absolute poorest sort of time to choose to go to market. And <clears throat> just to give one more example on that, like when we hit uh, uh, Corona, let's say beginning February, March, in March, we saw shippers sort of tying in their rates as well. And they sort of received very favorable rates. And uh, the ones who did the same, but in May, they were paying already then a premium relative to those in March. And this is, of course, the market until that can be used, whether it makes sense or not. And we even had customers that, you know, tied in their rates in, in, in May and saw year, year over year savings. Mm -hmm. But performance wise, relative to, the, to today's market and, 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 and what they sort of compete against with other shippers in the same industry, they sort of move to the bottom quartiles of, of, of the rates because they st struck it at the wrong time, simply. So mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's, I think more than ever, there's a reason to, to monitor the market more, um, uh, more frequently because the, the latest movements are, are so substantial and that you need that insight in order to be able to run uh, an efficient and uh, uh, and, and beneficial negotiation.